Hey everyone, Rene Ritchie from Tippy.com here, and today we are looking at the 2010 iPod Touch. So no new volume buttons. Uh, you do get the VGA camera in the front like the iPhone. Uh, you have the sleep-wake button on the same side as the iPhone. Uh, 720p uh, rear camera. Uh, you've got the thin form factor flat on the back, all stainless steel. You've got the dock connector, the 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and the little speaker at the bottom. Uh, the front is dominated by, well, you've got the home button, but you've also got this monstrous retina display. And all in all, it's a very nice package. Uh, let's just take a look at it side by side with last year's iPod Touch. Um, you can see it's got a little bit more of a tapered look. It's thinner, of course. Every year has to be thinner. Um, it is missing the big Wi-Fi uh, antenna blotch on the top left corner. Um, yeah, and here it is with the iPhone 4. You can see it's a little tiny bit smaller, but it is quite a lot thinner. Again, no new fancy uh, volume buttons. On the top also, quite a bit thinner. And Next to the 9.5-inch uh, screened iPad, yes, this is a iPad Nano. If you're trying to decide whether you want a tiny tablet or a massive tablet, well, there you go. There is the size difference. Um, although the screen real estate pixel-wise isn't that different. It is much, much lighter, of course, and yet, again, still much, much thinner. Now let's take another look at this 960 by 640 inch retina display. Those pixels, they are tiny. Can you see a pixel? I can't see a pixel, but compared to last year's model, yeah, you see you can see the moiré on the left uh, because the pixels aren't that big. It's clashing with the video recorder. And you can see a little bit of anti-aliasing along the edges here. It is crystal clear. It does not have an IPS or interplane switching panel like the iPhone, but I can't really tell a difference. Come on. Here is the camera app. It's got the same front-facing camera as the iPhone. Here I am. Hello. Uh, no HDR, no LED flash, but it does have a camera switch, and you can go to the 720p, also the same as the iPhone. But it's only 0.7 megapixels for stills, so nowhere near as good as the 5 megapixels on the iPhone. That means that you should pretty much consider this a video camera that can also do uh, still captures, mainly, almost like an old-school video camera that can take photos and not a modern camera that can also do video. In addition to the accelerometer, you now get the six-axis gyroscope. Uh, so for example, in real racing, um, before you had the gross kind of action of the accelerometer, it would feel you're going one way or the other and try to compensate, uh, and it wasn't very specific, but now the gyroscope is spot on. You really feel like every tiny motion you make is directly transferred to the game you are playing. Um, I would make an excuse and say it's hard to steer when you're on the side of the camera, uh, but I pretty much suck at steering uh, no matter what I'm doing, so no excuses for me. But uh, it, it really feels like I am in absolute control of this car, as uh, scary as that sounds. Under the covers, this bad boy is packing one of them new Apple A4 processors. It is still a Cortex A8. It is still a PowerVR SGX, but it is Apple's own brew of those things. I don't know if it's one gigahertz like the iPad. I suspect not, but it is still um, good enough to do wondrous things like Epic's Citadel demonstration here, where you can see uh, a ton of live rendering. Um, it is also amazingly power efficient, so you can play these games, you can watch your videos, uh, you can basically throw pixels around and do fancy uh, graphic effects all day long, well not all day long, but for hours and hours and hours. It does not have the same battery size um, as the iPhone. I think, in fact, Apple made this too skinny. If you saw the form factor thing in the beginning, um, they could have added a couple extra millimeters put in a beefier camera, uh, made the battery last as long as the iPhone, and nobody would have noticed besides Steve Jobs, but it's still pretty fantastic. Apple doesn't say, but it sounds like there's 256 megabytes of RAM in the iPod Touch, unlike the 512 in the iPhone. Now, why does this matter? So we go from tippy.com to Android Central, and the page just is right there. It's still in memory. It's still cached. I go to Crackberry, still there. Still in memory. Still cached. 
I go to pre-central and it has to start reloading. So that's about three pages held in memory. Now that will also mean uh, it can hold less applications, for example, in multitasking. Um, here's the iPhone. Now the iPod Touch doesn't have to do telephony like the iPhone, but if you look at the difference, like we just went from Tippy to Android Central, we're going to crackberry.com, we're going to precentral.net. These are all being cached, they're all held in memory here, WM experts. Um, Nokia experts. So that's six pages at least, and I've had, I think I've had up to eight at times. So the amount of RAM makes a huge difference, and I understand Apple wants to keep the cost down, they have to sell this at a cheap price, uh, but it's, it's kind of disappointing that the RAM is as low as it is. We've gone over this before in our iPhone 4 and our iOS 4 walkthrough, but this being an iOS device, 4.1 technically, it has all the usual fast app switchers and widget controls. It also has the ability to make folders for all of those many, many, many apps. So I just drop one in here, and there you go. You can make a games folder. More on this, check out our iOS 4 and iOS 4.1 in 10 minutes videos. Now we're going to try a FaceTime call with uh, Georgia just to see what it's like on the iPod Touch. Now the iPhone uses phone numbers to make uh, FaceTime connections. For the iPod Touch you have to set up an Apple ID email address and that becomes your contact if anyone wants to FaceTime you. Hey Georgia! Hey Nate! So you got an iPod Touch now? Sweet! How's do, it working? Do you feel thinner and less telephony? Uh, yeah, yes I do. <laughs> I feel like I've lost so do I, does it look any different on your end? Is the quality any different? No, it looks pretty much the same, actually. Did yeah. the call take longer? Uh, it took a few seconds, but I never know how complex all this NAT traversal and Wi-Fi routing and stuff is, so... It's, it's magic. It's just magical. <laughs> magical, eh? Unicorn tears. So, did you find that it was just as easy in order to connect to me? How did you actually find me? Um, I, lo I installed my mobile... Like I, I just connected to mobile me, it, synced, it sunk, synced, did something to all my uh, contacts, and then I had to set up an email address as a contact on my side. So if you want to call the iPod... Sorry? How long did it take? Uh, I don't know, 30 seconds? Okay, so pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. And now, just effortless, just press a button? Press a button and wait, yes ma'am. Alright, awesome. So I'm going to head on to the next part of the review, and I thank you very much for joining us. Right, bye, George. Bye, everyone. So Game Center went live right around the time the iPod Touch uh, came out. And here we can see you have a profile, you have all your friends. Uh, that was available before. But now you can actually find Game Center games, which you couldn't do previous to this release. So I only have two installed, Real Racing and Ms. Pac-Man, because that was the first. Um, you can see the leaderboards. Uh, so uh, go back, you can see the achievements that you earn. So it's very much like an Xbox Live kind of system. It'll do matchmaking. Uh, I never get recently played. Maybe I haven't played enough games. It'll do matchmaking, set you up with your friends, help you find people who are of similar skill levels if you don't have any friends. Um, so far, it's working, it's working pretty well. I could still do without the trumpet sound when you get a new uh, request, though. Uh, you can actually go and find Game Center games now. Apple has a whole new section in the App Store for it and there are more and more games being approved any time. So, in as much as the iPod Touch is a gaming device, Game Center is fairly fantastic for it. So like a lot of Apple products, it is both wondrous and tragic. It has a new Retina display, but it does not have the IPS panel. It has the cameras on both sides, but it doesn't have the 5 megapixel camera. It has the A4 processor, but it does not have the 512 megabytes of RAM. So it is a, an amazing upgrade to last year's iPod Touch, but not quite as good an upgrade as the iPhone 4 is compared to last year's model. However, it does not have the cell phone contract that the iPhone 4 has, and it is much smaller and lighter than the iPad. So uh, take a look at it and decide which iOS device is right for you.